Thank, thank you, and I will say that uh, we started ahead of schedule, which is a DLD first for me after so many years. This is the only time I've ever seen DLD start ahead of schedule, uh, which is great. And yes, it is absolutely true that I met Mary Lou here at DLD a number of years back and was very excited about what she's doing and decided to invest. Be before I get her started on what we're doing at Open Water, I just want to say a little bit more about the world of neuroscience and brain-computer interface. It has heated up dramatically in the last couple of years. Uh, we're seeing all sorts of people doing both invasive and non-invasive interfaces to the brain, with the goal being to be able to read and write information in our brains. And uh, in some ways, the, the ultimate interface technology. And uh, in our firm and, and my own uh, family office, we've been investing in a number of such companies. Uh, we have, uh, you, you all heard of Neuralink, uh, Elon Musk's company, uh, which uh, ha has uh, a, an ape playing Pong with its brain, uh, but it, it has a, the ape has everything else around it. Andy Kitchen didn't need the rest of the ape, he just needed the brain cells to play Pong. So I thought that was a pr pretty well, well done, pretty efficient way of using things. Uh, we have companies like Precision Neuroscience, which puts chips on top of the brain, so is a company called Synchron, which is now putting chips on top of the brain in humans uh, for various healthcare applications. Uh, we have uh, Kernel uh, Technologies, which is looking at other brain-computer interfaces. NeuroVigil, which has used its chips to help ALS patients uh, communicate better. So there's a world out here which is, says the brain is a mass of electrical and chemical activity, and we can sense some of that activity with modern methods, not just the old EKG methods, but you'll hear some other, other ways to do it. And that's going to offer us tremendous opportunities. Uh, and I believe it's going to change the way we interact with computers over the next two decades. So Mary Lou? Uh, sure. Uh, so I uh, started a company I talked about at DLD four or five years ago. Um, was a way to lower the cost of MRI by 1,000x. And we're still working on that, but we got distracted. And also brain-computer interface, but decided we wanted to save your mind before we read your mind. And in fact, we can refine it and, 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 and do um, a lot more. So I think I've got some slides coming up now. And so-, so The left side is the current slide. That's the yeah, one. so just verifying. So yeah. So. Um, you know, one of these things saved my life 27 years ago. I didn't know I needed it. I nearly died. It wasn't on my health care plan. I was a grad student. You know what they cost today, 27 years later? The same. <laughs> it's a problem. 85% of humanity lacks access to them, and they're not even that good. So we're talking about leapfrogging the big iron stuff that is great. The physics is amazing. But we have new physics enabled by Moore's law and the ever doubling of transistor density on chips, which when you can get something in a manufacturing process for chips, you just win. If you're in a two-ton magnet, a lot of smart people have tried. So what are we doing? Our first three products in order are, are stroke detection and uh, routing, because the reason people die of stroke isn't that we don't know how to treat clots, it's because we don't know they're having a stroke and they're sent to the nearest hospital and so forth. Neuromodulation, we're in stroke now. Um, we have a specificity and sensitivity in the 90s and growing to the high 90s for detecting stroke, which is unheard of, and that's because we have, we're, we're, we have a new kind of technology I'll explain a bit of. We're also using that to do neuromodulation. We've treated patients with depression not only do subjectively do they feel better, but objectively we see the changes on their fMRI score. We use that 210 magnet, 2 ton magnet, and see a change. And then also brain tumor therapy, where we're actually killing glioblastoma cells five times better than chemotherapy, all with the same unit, which is shocking. I know that's shocking. So how do we do this? It's a novel approach about modulating the waves and the wavelengths of light because we live at a moment where three years ago, the camera chips on all of your smartphones started to use less silicon so the camera chips would be cheaper. They're a buck. What that meant is the pixel size got smaller 
And that was a discontinuity in physics because the pixel size is the size of the wavelength of light. And so you can record the waves in the wavelength of light. So when we look at the, the camera chips that we use to see inside of your body, we look at waves that look like waves on the ocean and we use math to read them. We also can craft beams of light and sound to go into your body and even steer them anywhere we wish by sending the same wave but delayed from this array of emitters. We can couple through the skull. We can use this in the body too. But you know, that's sort of a quick overview. We're doing this with glioblastoma using a resonance, much like an opera singer with a certain note can burst a wine glass, but nothing else in the room is harmed. We exploit the property of these orange glioblastoma cells with a resonant frequency that exploits their brittleness, their cytoplasm to nucleus ratio, their cell membranes and so forth, so that they burst. And when they burst, they release proteins that vaccinate the brain against the very cancer you have. This can also work in other aggressive cancers. So this isn't just a joke, like we tried this. We grew up human brain organoids and tried an array of sonification parameters and basically are doing, as I mentioned, five times better than glioblastoma and not harming at all the healthy tissue that's slow growing. Tumors are fast growing, they're rickety ships and we can shake them apart pretty easily with a diagnostic level of ultrasound at certain frequencies with, with um, sonification parameters and not at all harm the healthy tissue at lower levels than it has been used on pregnant women and their fetuses for the last 50 years with no harm to those fast growing fetuses. We're scaling up, putting this in hundreds of mice. We should be in humans within a year. Again, glioblastoma is a death sentence. We're looking at combining because we release immunotherapy with big pharma on some drugs that can enhance the immunotherapy to, to just move as fast as possible. I, I can go on, but you know, basically, the issue with stroke is a detection problem. If we can send you to the right hospital, you can live. The most dangerous types of stroke are the large vessels, your carotid, say the trunk of the tree, it breaks off into some big heavy vessels. If one of those gets clogged, it blocks a lot of neurons, that whole volume that that, that blood vascular goes to. So the way we do that, just again, because what I've said sounds so impossible, we made a laser that works with these camera chips. Three years ago, thank you Howard, yeah. it was the size yeah. of the room yeah. and a million dollars, but we've reduced it to this size and we have a sample this size, should be a hundred bucks in mass production because we're slip streaming, streaming there on the laser development for LiDAR that's going live in cars mid this decade. So the light scatters through the brain, just like fire, like fire scatters through your body, like you look at the campfire, but you feel the heat, that's infrared, it goes through your body. But our chip sees this light that goes through this arc. And if we add in a blood vessel, you see the patterns change as the light ricochets off of the moving blood. And from that, we can determine the blood speed. And what a stroke is, is, is the blood speed changing. And so right now, um, what that means is we take all this data, but to the EMT, we give a, symbol, a sing signal to bring that guy to this hospital where they can get a thrombectomy done. Which we, they snake a catheter up and pull out a clot. It's literally a plumbing procedure. Our results so far are pretty amazing. Um, we have 100% differentiation ability between a stroke and a, a healthy normal. Right now, our specificity and sensitivity is higher than anything we've seen, re we know anything reported. We're at 90% sensitivity, 90% specificity, and about to submit for a breakthrough to the FDA to do this. And the cost of this thing could be, at volume, the cost of a stethoscope. Stroke is the number two killer in the world. So again, we, we, we're working on brain-computer interface, but this is a huge problem, and um, we're also at different frequencies exciting neurons. And so with that, we use a different frequency, a lot like the wine glass, but we can inhibit or excite neurons. And we've done our first studies of this at University of Arizona 
with about a dozen patients, or nine patients, um, with depression, and they both feel less depressed, they feel like they're stoned, they feel this elation, and, and it correlates to the fMRI data, that's the video form of MRI where you can see oxygen use, and oxygen use in your brain correlates to activity with your neurons, that's where you need the oxygen. And so we see a change, we basically, negative ruminative thought, a lot of things cause depression, but one of the results is that the neurons are firing too much in a groove. Also with OCD, where we can treat here, we're expanding this for anxiety and other things. But we literally focus to a tight spot. We can focus anywhere we wish to in the brain. We're also working on addiction and also this at different frequencies, more controversially, but we can use the same headset with a different software layer, could um, do neurogenesis, grow neurons, and grow synapses in neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. So that's up and coming as, as we're a small startup already trying to cure cancer, stroke, and <laughs> mental disease. It's, world number one is focus, right, okay. <laughs> but it's Thanks the same capitalist. technology. So just in summary, this is what the headset looks like. Ours is a little thicker. This is the ID for next year, but the same headset, cancer, mental disease, stroke, addiction, a, a lot of shots on goal. And ultimately, as we refine the, the resolution brain computer interface. So that's just a brief update on what, what we're trying to do. Right, and, and it's, what's so exciting is that once you can manipulate the brain, measure and manipulate the brain, the brain's controlling most of what we do and most of the way we live. And whether, whether it's the cancer cells, whether it's finding the blood flow in the brain to look at the stroke and see whether there's large vessel occlusion, clotting, or whether it's saying, gee, you've got depression, maybe we can uh, stimulate the right cells or, or, or dampen the stimulation of some cells firing to make that whole process uh, better. And uh, in, in somewhat the same way that, that Andy Kitchen was talking about growing set neurons outside the brain, there are other companies growing neurons outside the brain to test drugs. And so you can, rather than testing, a, if you have depression right now, the, the standard of care is to try an SSRI or to try one of the other types of inhibitors. And it takes three or four months before they see whether it works on you. And they work maybe on 20% of the people. Yes. Uh, we have, there's a company that I have uh, invested in in Israel called Genetica Plus that grows, that takes your neurons, your stem cells, grows the neurons, and then tests each of the different types of drugs on them serially on those homegrown neurons, if you will, and says, gee, for this patient, they won't respond to these two kinds of drugs, but they will respond to this one, saving months and, and getting care much more quickly to those players. That's on the chemical side. What open water is doing is on the electrical side. So the brain is, as I said earlier, it's a mass of chemicals and, and electrical impulses, and you can attack it with either or both methodologies. And we're seeing both of the, all those methodologies coming, coming into play. And make we're, ourselves better. Yeah. Help, like, not just sick care, but help, how do you want your brain to be better? And uh, part of that is maybe we can make kind of an inhaler for anxiety, right? Because anxiety leads to bad habits, like do I eat that tub <laughs> of ice cream or drink that alcohol or take those drugs or can I just neutralize that with and meditation a lot of what we're doing for mental disease can be achieved with meditation and breathing and other but this is a more direct route and it's quite objective in the case of cancer we can biopsy your specific cancer in the limit right grow it up on human brain organoids and get the tuned melody, really, of the right frequencies for you to kill your cancer in the limit, sure. like the drugs, but... And then, well, on the, on the enhancement side, you know, people take ProVigil and other such drugs to focus their attention and make them, if not smarter, certainly more aware and more acute. Yes. Uh, it became very popular for a while for... Adderall, right? Uh, Adderall, the yeah. Adderall-type drugs, yeah. Yeah, for, but... Uh, for, and the pilots take it, uh, you know, in, in the wartime. But in maybe wartime. we can do that focus. Maybe yeah. we can do that electrically, 
and, and not have them get it, take these drugs, which can often be addictive. So uh, we, we don't think that the electrical side of it will be as addictive as the chemical addiction. And on the stroke side, like, we know, like, an EKG is a nice analogy. You can, can predict a heart attack with an EKG. You can measure it. But now that's in your watch, even though you have to put the electrodes. So we're putting these, um, this visor on to detect the, the stroke, but ultimately, why can't that module be in your watch and tell you you're having a stroke, or even better, yeah. predict that you're about to have a stroke and get to, to eliminate that? In the limit, that's where we think we can go. Yeah. But right now, there's and, such a huge problem that we have, can do a lot of good with just and, this. And people are going to become more used to wearing headsets uh, after when Apple's going to announce their, their headset in the next few weeks, supposedly. And if, if they do, then people will become comfortable with things on their heads that are measuring a lot of things in the brain. So it won't just be for the heads-up display vision kind of things. It'll be to measure things. Uh, there, the, uh, there's an Israeli company that is using brain waves to, to tell who you are. In the same way that Face ID, when you look at your phone, it, it says, oh yeah, that's you, Howard, or maybe it's your twin brother, or with whatever 2% error rate it has, maybe it's somebody trying to spoof us. Uh, with brain waves, the false positive rates are much, much lower. And, and in that case, you don't have to log in anymore. You just put the, 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 the uh, normal, the Apple headset on, yeah. add two chips to it that pick up some of your brain waves, and now uh, cognitive technologies over in Israel says, oh, I, I know who you are. Uh, and not only that, do I know who you are, but somebody can't take your finger and put it on your phone to open it up and unlock it or, or hold it up to your face after they've done something bad to you and get access to your phone. Because if your brain's not on, it's not working. So there's all sorts of interesting implications for security yeah. as well as with using the brain you to Change do that. your thoughts so they can't coerce yep. you. And over the next few years, uh, the medical applications are going to grow dramatically. And the invasive ones, like precision neuro, the ones where you actually put a chip on top of the brain, which has thousands of sensors on it, uh, and also emitters so that it can send signals back in. So you can look at things like stopping epileptic seizures before they start, or, or right at the beginning of their starting. You can look at, at other things in terms of controlling uh, muscle movements with brain, with, with pure thought, or thought that's generated by the AI and goes into those systems, mostly for true medical uses. Recreational use, uh, you know, we, we saw uh, what, what Andy wants to do in the metaverse. I think there's a lot of rec things that we're going to see in the metaverse using brain-computer interfaces. Maybe you can transmit your emotions uh, more easily to other people because the, a, a, yes. the brain headset can measure your emotions and get that across. Are you doing anything with psychedelics? So the other, the other thing, of course, that affects the brain are psychedelics. And uh, the, certainly the US government is on a path towards making a little, towards easing the, uh, the restrictions that have been on all the psychedelics. They've certainly found that it, some psychedelics are very good at treating PTSD. And therefore, they're allowing those kind of uses uh, to treat the veterans who come back from war with PTSD. Psychedelics alter the brain chemistry a little bit, and I, I have no doubt that, and there's a lot of work going on in exactly how and, and how much, uh, that that's a very exciting area for the next few years. It's a little tricky to invest in because it's kind of still illegal mainly, but a little bit of legal, so you got to make sure you stay on the right side of the, the legal when you're doing that kind of stuff. But uh, I want, we want to thank DLD for, for uh, for giving us this, this platform. It's a wonderful conference, which I've enjoyed for over a decade. And uh, that's, what, that's what the state of neuroscience is, the news from the neuroscience frontier. Thank you.